It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today I'm going to be checking out and having a run through on a desoldering iron station. Uh, you know, as always, um, anything that I say in these videos and these reviews are 100% my opinion. This is not a paid review. I'm not getting any money for this at all. What I've been sent is actually being sent courtesy of Banggood. Um, I know that there's been some comments and messages from people in the past about whether this counts as paid promotion or not. That's really up to you to decide. The way that I'm interpreting it is I'm not actually getting any money for it. So, and this is just a review unit. They can ask for it back at any point in time. Um, that's it. So, you know, if somebody has a bit more clarity in how the YouTube policies are, please let me know. I'm more than happy to go back and change the uh, upload settings and things like that, tick the appropriate boxes. But from my understanding, this is not a paid promotion or advertisement of product. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, I want to show you what we're looking at today, and it is the Pros Kit SS331H Electric Solder Sucker Desoldering Device Anti-Static High Power. It's $150. Uh, plus a little bit of shipping. It, I didn't think it looked that big, but this box is massive. It actually took quite a while to get here because of the sort of COVID-19 issues that's happening around and causing backlog and delay. But, you know, that's just how it is. Um, you know, it's hopefully the 240 volt version for Australian power, 90 watt iron, eats 140 watts, can go up to 480, which is more than enough to desolder unleaded solder uh, and I didn't really look too hard on the dimensions because it didn't really provide it. it just said you know it's got a couple of things and can help you with that desoldering so you know it seems like there's a gun there's a trigger that you pull not much additional detail some needle cleaning uh, for the actual tip comes with three different size tips and it's supported cable. I don't even know why they bothered circling that. So I've got it in a package here. You can see the uh, the package got quite beat in actually being sent here. It sort of looked like it had quite a challenging journey. Uh, you know, corners ripped and plastic and whatnot. Was not protected in any way whatsoever. They literally just bunged it in his bag, slapped a label on it and off it went into the wild to make its way to me. Now it does have my address label on it on one side of this, so I'm just gonna cut it away from here and we'll see what I actually ended up with. So, didn't really need the scissors because it's quite lightweight plastic. Um, it is a huge box, absolutely huge box. Right, there it is. It takes up the majority of my table. So I don't know how it's gonna fit on my table, but we'll try and make it fit. Uh, my ring light is obviously reflecting off that. So LCD desoldering station, and it's the SS31, as it says, pros kit. Uh, 140 watts to and 480 Celsius. So it's pretty much as it describes. The front just has some solder collector, ceramic heater, fast heater, vacuum, has a gun with sponge, uh, shows what the heater looks like, some flavor text, not much really great value on this. Okay, and then this side has some tech specs. So we should be seeing, so this is the 33H. I don't know what the difference is between the E and the B. Uh, Pretty much everything as it said, so it goes to sleep after 10 minutes without use, complies with uh, reduction of hazardous substances, and it weighs 1.6 kilos. So there you go, 1.6 kilos. And of course, it is made in China. Radio, let's crack it open. Okay, so we've got some instructions. Comes in a little packet. We got, I think this will probably be the power cable or accessories box on the side here. Let's just 
have a quick look inside. Oh, that'll be the gun itself, I believe. So there's... Oh no, maybe. That's the, the iron. There's some spongy bits. There's the needle cleaning bits. There is... The actual gun itself. And that box is now empty. Okay, so let's put that there. <clears throat> uh, well, there's two spare tips. Obviously, there's already one installed. So we'll have to see what diameter that tip is, if it's going to suit. We've got some cleaning nozzles, needles that have been... Uh, it looks like they've punctured their way and tore the actual seal on that. They've actually broken that in transit. That's okay, as long as you don't stab yourself. And that'll be the actual gun holder, so we should probably take that out. Since the base is probably somewhere in this box. <clears throat> okay. And we'll put this box aside temporarily. On the floor somewhere. Okay, we've got a bit of protection foam. And that's power cable. That's a vacuum line uh, with a gasket. This heavy thing is the base for the actual gun holder with a sponge. So we'll need that. As you can see, I'm running out of space. Just going to put the manual. Ooh. Uh, somewhere that I can get to it and then we'll take that out and the actual unit itself clunk wow okay so you're gonna need a bit of desk space for this base station uh, I've got the ruler we're looking at about 13 and a half wide we're looking at almost 19 deep and height generally isn't too much of an issue unless if you've got a workbench with uh, shelving and stuff on it. It's reading 17 centimeters high. All right, so it's it's pretty big. It's a big boy. There is the front of it. Now that looks like a filter, and then the gasket's going to go on to that. That's the actual power and whatnot. The data for the actual gun. The back of it has the plug and switch. 3.1 5 amp fuse inside, which <clears throat> it doesn't look like there's any easy access to the fuse. So if the fuse does go um, oh no, actually, there's the fuse. Maybe? I think you can pop that open because it does actually show a fuse symbol on that yeah so it shows you there use only with a 250 volt fuse and there's like a little clip with a screwdriver that you could probably get into that if you needed to um, it probably takes this outer housing off but I'm not going to fiddle with that right now so that's that's massive um, I probably should open the manual it's nice that it comes in a little plastic baggie <clears throat> Okay, a quick start guide is always useful. Uh, designed for lead free desoldering, especially. Okay, place the gun in the holder, connect the plug to the receptacle, turn clockwise to tighten the plug nut, check power supply correspondence off position. Connect the control unit to the power switch on the power. Self test is carried out. If not used for 10 minutes, will automatically go into sleep. Okay, so we've got some temperature settings. Press up, down, can switch the digital display in the set point display. Set point can be changed one degree by tapping up and down buttons. Pressing the button will change the set point quickly. Uh, we can change from C to F by pressing things. And then there'll be a heat on display when it's actually going to get hot. <coughs> Radio. There's some cautions, pretty standard stuff. 
Uh, maintenance, check for errors, check for damaging parts. Okay, so desoldering gun maintenance doesn't really. It's giving me a lot of information about looking after it, which is great, but the front part is not good at telling me actually what to do. It's just pretty much turn it on, set the temperature, and, and that seems to be it. There's nothing about connecting the actual other parts to it, and then the back of it is in Chinese. There's some heating element replacement, which is great if you can get the spare parts. Um, so, yeah, seems like we're going to have to do a little bit of going at it ourselves, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's put the stand together. Done. That was nice and easy. Um, all right, so let's put the power on. Well, let's connect the power. Putting it on might be a, a misleading statement. So I don't want to put it on yet. accidentally clicked my mouse with the instructions. Just trying to undo this twisty that they put on it. Okay. Well, the power cable's got a, a good amount of length on it, at least, so that's nice. And we'll put that in. Nice, snug fit. I won't plug that in yet. And then here's the actual gun. So we've got the data, the data, and then there's the actual vacuum line that I was talking about before. That tip's got a, a little protector on it, which is nice. So let's just take this. Actually, let's take the, this twist tie off. Really big twist tie. Let's take, oh no, there's no protector. That's straight up it. That's that's the connector. I thought that was actually a bit of black plastic. So we will obviously need to take the gasket and the air connector. So it's got instructions on turning it which way. We're going to want to fit that on. Actually, let me just unplug that. All right, so the gasket actually has an orientation on it. There's like a, a inner lip and an outer lip. So the inner lip should fit inside that which it does. And that will provide a good seal and then that will sit on top. It should be, you know, sort of finger tight, wrist tight. You really shouldn't be cranking that too hard. That's the purpose of the gasket. Let's straighten out these. Good amount of length. We're talking like probably, you know, a meter of length there. So you can have the actual station sitting quite far away from you. The pins go in and lock the collar down. And then I'm going to bung this on. Okay, so that's the default tip, which has no hole in it. Um, unless if it's just got solder there and they've just covered it with solder. So what I'm going to do is have a look at these other two tips and see what they look like. Because obviously we want one that's going to be big enough to cover our switch pins if we want to use this to desolder some switches right so they too have everything covered now I'm just wondering if when you heat these up um, so I'm just showing you here see how it's all flat and filled in 
So all of them are like that, including the one on the actual gun itself already. Uh, so I suspect they're already pre-filled, pre-tinned, and it's going to smoke a bit. My only issue is... Uh, what size do I want? I'm probably going to have to go with a 1.5, which is the biggest, because switch pins are quite big. So let's just choose this big flat one, and then I've got to figure out how to change it, if it's just pulling it straight off or not. don't know if the manual will say very much. Uh, it doesn't really say anything about it, so we're just going to gung-ho it. Actually, it's got a collar, right? So it's going to be just like the collar type. I should be able to pull that off. Yeah, there we go. That will come off. Let's put the fat one on top. You can see the actual ceramic heater is there. There's the vacuum line. So we'll put that on. Having never used one of these before, I think this is a good experience for me to uh, check out one of these like this. So let's put that one away. Now what I can see is at the back of the glass chamber, uh, there's another filter there. So that's essentially to prevent any solder from making it into the airline. And then there's the filter at the back here, which is to prevent any of that coming through as well accidentally and reduce the amount of fumes um, that are actually going into the vacuum unit. Now there's a lock button and yeah okay so doesn't tell me what's going on with that. Secures filter pipe okay so that's a maintenance thing so I don't want that I want that to be locked because that holds the glass in place I need to pull that out to actually clean it. Um, I don't know if it's glass or, or plastic. It feels like plastic, actually. Okay. I think it's all set up and practically ready to go. Now, what am I going to desolder? Well, you would have seen at the start that there was a time lapse of me breaking down a board. And that board is this vintage Telex board with cherry mx blacks in it now i actually had a look at the molding of the case uh, but the time lapse probably won't show it very well but the actual timestamp on the case shows it was manufactured in 1986 uh, so quite a while ago now uh, this is a sagum pcb made by sagum the components on look really good relatively clean i can't see any issues on where it may have failed that could have potentially caused it to not work so, but you know what? The owner of this board wanted to desolder to salvage the switches so the switches could have another life. That's just the way it is. What I do find really interesting is that on some of these parts, you'll see where there's no components. Somebody, a technician at some point somewhere, has actually put these black crosses on these to indicate that whoever's putting this together should not fill components there. So that was really, really interesting. So I'm going to be having a go at desoldering these switches, some of these switches, using this unit. So that's what's going to happen. Now, uh, I have a small creature here, and it's going to be dangerous. You can't be in here when Daddy does this, okay? Because it's going to be dangerous for you. Thank you. Are you going to be helping Mommy today with making the donuts? Mummy's already finished making the cream buns, the custard buns. Okay, well you can go have them while Daddy goes and does this, okay? What am I missing out? Custard buns. Amazing. Sounds really great. Norwegian custard, custard buns is what my wife is making. Alright, so uh, let's move this to the side. Now I don't know if I really should be adding flux or anything of that nature. So, but at the moment, I haven't pulled out any solder because I'm just going to go with, uh, well, actually, I probably should get some solder. I should go get some solder. 
because it's good practice to, to reflow with some solder. You can see it's taken up so much of my actual table space here. Uh, it's huge. I'm going to really struggle to put something here to work on, but I'm just going to put it that way. And uh, the other thing is I need to be able to put a, a vacuum, a, a fume extractor of some sort, so I'll be using this, and that way I can attempt to desolder using that. Okay. Uh, that should be it. So I'm going to go get some solder and I'll be right back. So the reason why I'm using uh, some solder here is because I don't actually have any flux. Uh, yes, no flux. I really should get some flux, but this has got solder. Uh, this has got rosin in it, so it'll act essentially as the flux for me. And uh, the because I don't know if this has been this board's been soldered with lead or without leaded solder. It'll help reduce the actual melting temperature if I put some fresh solder on it and then use the gun to wick it back up. Okay. Uh, now I need to plug this in. We'll have a look at what the actual front looks like. Just I'll hold it up and then we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I've just plugged in the base unit. I won't turn the fan on until I actually start desoldering and let's just uh, tick on the front. Right, so we've got set point at 160. Uh, let's go up. I like to solder, desolder about 350 if I can. The gun's actually making noises, and I suspect that's because that's the vacuum. So that's just changing between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So we're looking at about 250 right now. There's some airflow coming out the back. Yeah, I can feel the airflow. I can hear it. The gun... Well, it stopped making noises now but it was squeaking and I can see the front of that where that flat tip is it's starting to dent so obviously the actual solder is is going whoa there we go wow that that's <laughs> really scary sounding so let's just go up to 350 that was actually pretty cool quick about what an, a minute to get up to 350 so it's sitting there now and let's turn this on let's give it a try oh this thing is awesome okay I'm gonna do it without adding extra solder anyway to see No, that didn't do very good. So, having the extra solder... Alright, let's reflow it a little bit better. Ooh, this is being difficult. Oh, okay. That, that first one must have been an absolute fluke. But what we can see is... On the back of the gun, there's all that solder particulate that it's actually sucking up. So it's doing... I'm actually really impressed. Alright, I don't want to overwork that one. It doesn't seem to want to come out. So let's try the next one. 
Well, that one came out nice and clean. That one came out alright too. What is wrong with this first one? Okay, so that first one's definitely not wanting to play. No, oh, that one wasn't fantastic. I might just not be applying enough heat to it. So you can see the front of that is starting to ball up a bit and that's where the sponge is really meant to come into play. I actually haven't wet that sponge so I'm going to sit it down and I'm going to go get my brass brush to clean it. So my, my bucket of uh, brass, just going to, I really should get a new one because this one's kind of uh, getting on and getting full. And I really don't want to knock that off the table. Okay, so let's just ramp this up a bit to 400. Four hundred. Okay, so let's try it on this top one. Just gonna flow some straight out. That one came out. Oh, it sounded different, and the actual end result here was it didn't actually get it out. So. You can kind of hear it when it actually gets good airflow. No. All right, so I've done a number of switches now. Let's just bring it up to the camera so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so if the focus will get onto it struggling a little bit with the focus I think the shininess okay is getting to it but you can see that there's that one came out clean that one not so clean that one was clean that one was clean that one was clean that one was clean this first one was clean second one was clean third one was clean fourth one was clean so it's certainly doing the job I'm just not sure what's happening with this first one. It's kind of partially perforated it, where some of the solder's broken through, but it's obviously not getting enough of it. And you can see there is a lot that's caking up there on the back of that, uh, that chamber, that target there. Alrighty. Well... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this part of the video because um, I'm going to attempt to desolder this whole board and then we'll come back and actually check out what I thought of how it did on the rest of this board or as much of it as I feel is going to give me a good idea on its use. Alright, so we'll be right back. Okay, so, so we are back. Uh, I've actually desoldered about half of the 60% block now. I've done one, two, three, four, five rows up to about this midline screw mount point. Uh, and I did that in about 10 minutes. Is that fast? Is that not fast? 
Uh, I feel like it's quite fast because I'm working with unleaded solder here and if I was trying to do that with a solder sucker I just feel like it would have taken me a lot longer to do that. Some of these are still stuck. So this first one I managed to fix by flooding it and sucking it, flooding it and sucking it a number of times. This one down here I had to do a couple of times before it came loose. Uh, there's still a couple that are actually here that are no good. So that one for example is one that I have to rework and this last one once again. But if I was trying to do that with a solder sucker I kind of feel like it would be just as bad if not worse. For most of these it was really easy. You would have seen some of them I did them without even adding extra leaded solder. I just put the iron down. I did bump it up to 415 degrees. Uh, I held it I gave it a bit of a swirl when I felt the solder softening and then that allowed me to suck it up and I found that if I moved the actual head so that it was contacting the pin on the inside it also made it easier to get that temperature through the actual solder joint itself to suck up. Now you'll see that this chamber now is just absolutely chockers full of, of solder. Uh, I don't actually know at what kind of congestion before you lose sufficient vacuum pressure uh, but you know right now it's still working it's still sucking on these so I think it's probably still okay I can definitely see the discoloration of that white filter disc now well that chamber is really warm because obviously it's got the iron heating up the hot air it's pulling in really hot solder and solder fumes so you definitely don't want to be touching that uh, until it cools down. So, yeah, you know what? I'm actually quite happy with how this works. It's straight on, you heat it up, you wiggle a bit, you press the trigger, and it just sucks it up. You can see the fumes pull into this. I'm not smelling anything, but that's also because I'm using this fan unit. If you haven't seen it, I have a review on this FA400 Hako clone. Uh, fume extractor device. It'll be in the channel as well somewhere. Ergonomically it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, big fat trigger. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's a good size for you know medium sized hands, even small sized hands will be able to hold it okay. You do feel a bit of heat if you're working like this. I did feel the heat radiating off the top of the actual gun, but it's no worse than if you're actually soldering anyway with a normal iron and using a solder sucker. I kind of felt a little bit lost with my left hand because normally the solder suck is in my left hand. So I'm soldering and then pumping it and then if I had to I would flood it you know with a bit of solder being held between other fingers. Uh, so it was kind of like well I didn't always need that feeling a bit lost but you know what it's a lot easier on the hands. I'm not stressing my thumb muscle trying to actually you know prime the solder sucker which is is a really good thing. So I've turned that off for the moment to let it cool and then I can have a bit of a break and then I'll go back and I'll slowly tackle the rest of these and hopefully pop them out. But I felt that I should try actually getting some of these ones out. So the iron's off, there's no more fumes. Let's turn that off so I don't have to talk at a louder volume. Okay, let's get uh, the switch puller out. And let's see if I did the job correctly. Voila! Easy. And I didn't even melt the bottom of the switch. So, you know what? That did its job beautifully. Look at that. Now is this one of the ones that was stuck? No, it's clean on the other side. There we go. Is this one I desoldered? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then this one is the last one in that row. Easy peasy. Like this, this little baby here, this unit here, while it takes heaps of space, it's working very efficiently. It's a little bit noisy because the pump does make a lot of noise and 
you know, the fan here I'm running makes a lot of noise, but you know, you could put on earmuffs or listen to music or something like that if the noise in the drone's going to get to you. But I think this is a winner. I think this is a winner. I'm really happy with it. It will obviously take up a lot of space on your workbench, but you know, it makes short work of it and it also pulls in the fumes. So while I haven't actually got my little PM meter set up and running, even if I didn't have this, I would be kind of say that a lot of the fumes are going to get intake in through this actual unit into the filters and not out into the open space, which we now know from my little experiment in the other video, that's not necessarily a very good thing at all. So there you go. There you have it. Um, that is the SS331 Pros kit desoldering station so that's it there uh, this is the H model I still don't really know what the H stands for uh, but if you're interested in checking out to see what the current price is or if there's any deals or if you have coupons and things like that I of course will have a link to the product in the description below um, yeah so that's it that's that's where we are at Thank you very much for checking the video. Please leave in the comments below what you thought of this unit. Is it going to be worthwhile? I don't know. It depends on how many boards you plan on desoldering or how many boards you tend to solder badly that you have to fix. Or are you somebody who goes out to a junkyard and salvages, you know, boards from electronic recyclers and things like that to get vintage switches like what we're doing here today? Um... I think that's a wrap and I'm going to go wash up a little bit, have some Norwegian custard buns before I get back to finishing this board. So thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that like button, hit that share button if you think somebody else should check out this video and this product. Uh, and of course hit that subscribe button and the bell notification if you want to be on top of any of my new videos. Thanks again and of course. As usual, until next time, happy clacking.